a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers has glorified his ser servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life put you to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witness, witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of his, all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments, are liars, 
and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in breaking of bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I, myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Back in December, as we entered into not only Advent, but a new liturgical year, uh, we made a shift in our scriptural uh, focus, uh, particularly on the gospel. Uh, we're still in that year, and we will be until uh, December of this year. Uh, and the gospel focus usually is Mark. And to just remind everybody, Mark is the shortest of all the gospels. Uh, he wrote it very quickly. He doesn't include the uh, infancy narratives at all. Uh, he gets right into Jesus' uh, public ministry, et cetera, et cetera. So sometimes we have to supplement Mark because there's not quite enough for us to use in our Sunday liturgy. So we go to the Gospel of John. Uh, and John is the highest of all the theological uh, gospels that are written. It was much later after the whole death and resurrection. Uh, but today we have a detour. We're not in Mark and we're not in John, but we're in a detour. Uh, we've all experienced a detour where they were walking down the street and all of a sudden we see the sidewalks closed and we have to go around or driving our car or again another detour comes and but the thing is is what we're always going to get where we need to be it's just a detour we're not going too far off the beaten path and here's our little detour before we get more into today's gospel uh, and that's at the very beginning uh, and uh, we didn't hear it last week uh, last sunday's gospel was about uh, thomas and uh, whether he was doubting or not and the deacon did a fabulous job of preaching to, for us to understand the that Thomas often gets a bad rap for being doubting Thomas. Uh, but here we have the two disciples that were on the road 
after Jesus' death in Jerusalem. Uh, it's called the road, road to Emmaus. It's a beautiful story when these two disciples are walking down the road and the stranger comes among them uh, and wants to know what's been going on. And they're like, wait, 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 wait a minute. You don't know what's been going on and all these things in Jerusalem? Uh, and they start to tell and he starts to talk and uh, they walk along and walk along and they invite him to stay, this stranger, on their way to Emmaus. And he does. And then when he breaks the bread, they recognize him in the breaking of the bread. It was Jesus himself. And now we're picking up on that story. That was our little kind of detour coming back into today. Because you and I are such great recipients of so many faithful who have gone before us and who have, from one generation to the next generation, passed on the truth of the life of Jesus, not only from his birth, through his death, but his resurrection. But that early church really struggled. And that's what we hear. Often in the Easter season, we hear a struggling church to really come into existence. Uh, they were highly persecuted, for example. It wasn't easy for them. Uh, we know that Peter and uh, Paul, then they get locked up and put in prison for trying to proclaim the good news. And so picking up on the story, here Jesus once again stands in their presence. And you would think if he was a good boss or a demanding boss, he would have said, hey, guys, you're not doing your job. Being in this room is not doing your job. Your job's not in this room. Your job is beyond the doors. And I really would like you to get out those doors. But he also begins this way. After his violent death, after Peter did deny him, saying, I would never die, you Lord, after they're all locked up for fear of the other Jews and what has happened and transpired by finding the empty tomb and who did that and is it real, they're still filled with their anxiety about his death and he has this to offer them, peace. That's all, peace be with you. I'm not upset with you. I'm not disappointed in you. I want to extend to you my peace. And I want you to do something with my peace. I want it to become your peace as well. And I really do want you to go outside those doors and bring that peace to this world. Because I didn't say that I would end the violence of the world like the violence that I went through with my own death. And if any of us are paying attention to any headline at any minimal way of real news stuff in our world, there's real violence still in our world, in this country and in this land. And it's incumbent upon us that day that we renewed that Easter Sunday or at the Easter Vigil, when we renewed our baptismal promises, we promised to participate in the life of Christ, not just when we take ourselves to church on Sunday or in our own home, when we do our devotions or our prayers or things like that, but we were died in those waters to rise with Christ, to be that new Christ in this world, to go forth beyond those doors, beyond those boundaries that the world wants to often impose upon us so that we can do as he did. Peace, peace be with you. Maintaining the truth of his identity that he's fully human, may have something to eat. I gave him a little piece of fish, a little baked fish. I don't know if it was morning time or not, but they often ate fish for morning. That's not on my agenda. But <laughs> his fullness, touch me, I'm still real. You can't touch a ghost, you can't touch that, but you can touch me. And the way that Jesus continues to touch us, not only in his word, is in the breaking of the bread. A real food for the journey in this life, and this life where we're journeying to the next life because the violence of his death and the unconditional love of God to raise him from death makes it possible for us to move from this world to the next. But the question always remains, what do we do in the meantime? In the meantime, we go into the difficult situations like Jesus did, and we do as Jesus did. He brought peace to people's lives. Not only that, he wonderfully reminds them at the end of the power of the Holy Spirit to do something very important in our relationships here on earth, something that leads to real peace in people's lives, and that's the experience of the forgiveness of our sins. These are the works that we are called to be about as God's holy Easter people in this world, a world still in its lone level of chaos, but a world that does know the peace of Christ by the way that you and I are willing to bring it into this world, not in a forceful way, not in a demanding way, not in a punitive way, not in a punishing way, but in the way that Christ did it. Peace 
be with you.